Well, good morning. Welcome back to Hall Family Farms. If you saw that short video I posted yesterday on the update on these Hanover tomatoes, you'll notice in that video I mentioned I had an unwanted visitor on my tomato plant, the tomato hornworm. Now, I didn't see it yesterday when I was filming that short video, but I found it today and I want to talk about that and also show you a comparison of how these tomatoes are doing in the ground versus the tomato we have using the crack key hydroponic method. So stay tuned and let's get a look at this tomato hornworm. I'm really loving these Hanover tomatoes. They are just producing like mad. I've got tomatoes, I've got blooms, and some of these tomatoes are the size of the palm of my hand already. And they haven't even started really turning red. So let's focus on our old arch enemy, the tomato hornworm. Let me show you. And there he is, folks. My old arch enemy, the tomato hornworm. Look at that. Oh, he knows I'm on to him. Did you see him stop eating? All right, here's what we're gonna do. All right, now that I got that big sigh out, let's talk about this tomato hornworm. So there are a variety of ways you can deal with it. Probably the most quick and effective way is to pull it right off the tomato plant and squash it. Now I'm not really in the mood to to get tomato hornworm entrails all over my hands. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put on a glove because I don't want to get that on my hands, but I'm gonna stick it in a old Lando Lakes butter container that I have cleaned out. I've put water and some Dawn dish soap and we're gonna see if that will drown and kill those things. Now, if you noticed in the video, the up close video of the tomato hornworm, you didn't see any white little things on the back. Those are eggs uh, that a parasitic wasp lays on the backs of the tomato hornworm. And when they hatch, the larvae actually go inside the tomato hornworm and they eat and feed off the inside of the tomato hornworm. An awful way to die. But you want to leave those on your plants as much as those hornworms are continuing to devour your tomato plants. You want to leave them because eventually those larvae are going to eat to a point where the tomato hornworms obviously going to die. But also it's going to repopulate those parasitic wasps so that you'll have them in your garden and so if you have other hornworms on other tomatoes, they'll be able to fly, go, lay their eggs on the backs of those tomato hornworms and repeat that process. Now there are also uh, insecticides you can use. I'm not really a big fan of using insecticides. I'm trying to be organic here at Hall Family Farms. There are also some organic products and I'm trying to stay away from those too. So we're going to use the natural method of just pulling them off. I'm not going to squash them but I am going to see if I can drown them in this Dawn dish water soap that I've got mixed up here. So let's get back to that tomato hornworm and let's get him off this plant. All right now that I've got my garden gloves on let's see if we can remove this thing. Now he's not going to want to go easy so let's see. Yeah, he's not gonna come off easy. He's he's fighting me. All right, there we have it, folks. Look, he's trying to bite me. Oh yeah, look at that. I can feel him trying to. Oh, he's throbbing on the inside. He's probably excreting his bowels on me. Look at that on the glove. Yeah, he's trying to eat me. Let's get him in the water. All right, I've got him in the water. I'm sorry I didn't catch that on film, but let me see if I can get him up out of there. I think he's already drowned. This water's warm. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like he's already succumbed to the soap and water, but I'm gonna leave him in there for a little bit. Man, that is 
a big tomato hornworm. All right, so now let's go over and look at the Hanover tomato that we've got growing using the crack key method of hydroponics and check that out so you can have a comparison here. All right, guys, here is the Hanover tomato that I've got growing using the crack key method of hydroponics with this Lowe's five gallon bucket with a water nutrient blend to feed this plant. Now, as you can see, this plant is definitely not anywhere close to the size of the plants that you just saw in my garden, which are planted in soil, which is a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a disappointment. But having said that, this plant, if you'll recall from the original video I posted when we planted that little seedling in this five gallon container, it was kind of leggy compared to the others that I planted in my garden. So it was already a little stressed. And then it took a little while for the roots to kind of acclimate to being submerged in water and then developing those important air roots in order to have that exchange of gases and whatnot. So it took a little while. Now it's being devoured by not one, but two tomato hornworms. And so we need to take care of those. You also notice that the, it has set fruit, but these tomatoes are obviously much, much smaller. And I mentioned in the original video that I was going to stake this tomato because it was so tall and lag lanky, and I didn't get around to it. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to stake it, and I think what I'm going to do also is dig a hole and put this container in the hole, leaving the top two or three inches exposed. That way the soil will keep the roots a little cooler. I think that also may have had a, a bearing on the restriction of growth here. I think the roots probably like a cooler environment and with this being exposed in the sun probably a good 10 to 12 hours a day and particularly right here with the concrete this is probably not ideal. So I'm going to relocate this. I'll probably take it out to the garden actually. Bury this container up like I said to about two-thirds maybe two-thirds of the way and stake it and then continue to monitor its growth and compare it to those that are in the actual soil out there. But another telltale sign, and let me see if I can show you that you've got tomato hornworms. If you don't see them on your plant, you'll be able to see their poop <laughs> on the uh, surface, whether it's the soil, black plastic, or in this case, concrete. So let's take a closer look at that. All right. All of that black stuff you see here, all of these little, looks like soil actually, probably good for plants, uh, is poop. That's what you see there. And that's what's being produced by these tomato hornworms as they devour your tomato plants. So let's take a look and let's see if we can take care of this problem here on this Hanover tomato. All right, here's one, and I see another one. We actually have, it looks like three on this tomato plant, so it's really under attack. They probably love the nutrients that are in this tomato from the crack key formula. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this one, just like we did the one that we found out in the garden, and we're gonna put it in our water solution here with the Dawn dish soap. I'm going to get my glove on here. Let's see if we can remove this one. This one is actively feeding right now. Alright, as you can see, this one is actively feeding right now. They not only eat the, the leaves, but it looks like they also feed on the stems as well. What's interesting I noticed on the one out in my garden, doesn't seem that they like the blossoms for some reason, because they left, that hornworm that we found out there, left the blossoms. It ate the leaves, nibbled on the stems. 
and I just missed it but I saw this one actually poop while it was eating so let's go ahead and take care of this guy and then we'll move on to his friend which is over here on this leaf and then we've got another one down below here we've got a real problem all right got my glove on let's see I'm gonna back this up just a little bit all right so we'll probably tackle this one first he's actively eating the other one his buddy over here right there and then we've got another friend that's just below here so let's get this guy first I'm gonna move around here I'm gonna see if I can actually put this in the water solution so here's my container go ahead and get that right there all right let's get this fellow right here it looks like he's taking a break from eating now would be a good time he doesn't have quite the grasp on this tomato I'm sure he's gonna get really agitated here when I go to grab him yep there he goes oh oh me oh there he is okay he fell off hold on here I'm gonna see if I can pick him up now came off a lot easier than the other one he's not quite as big either but there he is let me see if I can get him in the camera here all right let's put him in the water there he goes All right, let's get his friend now before he catches on. All right, now that we've got him in there, let's move on and get his friend before he gets wise. All right, there he is. Just drop him in there. It shouldn't take too long. All right, let me find that third one, and then we will dispose of him as well. All right, here's the third one on this Hanover tomato grown in the crack key method. We're going to go ahead and pull him off as well. Let me see if I can get him off of there. There we go. All right, I'm going to just pop him in as well. All right, that's going to do it for this episode on our Hanover tomatoes. But before I go, let me show you the roots on this plant. Even though it's suffering, it has finally started to adapt to the crack key method. And I think now that I've got these tomato hornworms off of this plant, and if I dig the hole, plant this container two thirds of the way into the ground to keep those roots cool, and also stake it, I think this is going to come back and do well for us. So stay tuned as we give you updates on that. Let me remove these hornworms and show you these roots. Alright, All right, let me just take this lid off. Look at that. Now these nice white roots, those are those air roots that are developing that's so important. And then you have the roots that reach down and draw up the nutrients from the water solution. It's drawn down the water, I'd say, oh, 
not quite, maybe about two thirds of the way so far. So, and the water is nice and clear, no algae buildup. But I really think it's going to do a whole lot better if we submerge this into the ground about two thirds of the way to keep these roots cool. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get this lid back on. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Please be safe out there. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.